Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hope you had a great weekend. Did you go somewhere this weekend? Did you take a day trip somewhere? Did you travel somewhere and come back just a few hours? <laughs> Did you get to enjoy the nice weather and then the rough, rainy weather? Um, did you get to connect with an old friend? <laughs> did you get to make a new friend? Okay. So I hope you had a wonderful weekend. My name is Alex. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library. I teach for the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, and the Uchi Creek, and now the Grove Town Library. Yay, with our new building and everything. So very glad that you're here with me today. So. Of course, this is one of our live classes since we're staying home and staying virtual and safe and everything. So I hope that you're staying safe too. Hope you're not here to um, hope you're here to learn something new. Now on the replay, do realize you can fast forward and rewind and everything. But if you come to the live classes, then you can ask me questions. Of course, feel free to post questions in the chat. Now since we've switched over to YouTube, you do need to be logged into YouTube to be able to subscribe to our channel and to be able to post questions in the chat so make sure you're logged in for that okay so before we start our class about windows 10 and flash drive basics okay let's go ahead and start talking about some of the classes we're going to have this week so make sure when you post in the chat do you realize there may be a little bit of delay just because of the way the chat works but the big question i always ask before i start class is how can I help okay what questions do you have um, my classes I kind of have a syllabus that we we go by but also it can change depending on your questions get more specific get more advanced in any way and just see how I can I help so today we're doing Windows 10 and flash drive basics excuse me Tomorrow at 11, we're going to be doing internet shopping and digital couponing. Yay. It's a very fun class. One of the things we'll also be talking about is our apps. And hopefully you're doing the app stuff and getting extra coupons. And a lot of the apps and the drive through restaurants and stuff, you can actually do curbside ordering. So if you haven't played around with that, uh, it's a fun thing to do. We'll talk about saving money too, looking for online deals. And um, tomorrow afternoon, yes, we'll be doing an internet browser basics. We'll talk about using our browser, browser add-ons, and we'll also talk about um, keeping ourselves safe online, lots of information about add-ons and blockers and all that kind of stuff. And then on Thursday at 11, we're going to be doing an introduction to Raspberry Pi projects and ideas, okay? So I'll also be posting these uh, links, but if you want to go to our links on the specific Facebook pages for each library, but also you can go to our main YouTube channel, which is what this is on right here, and you can find our videos too. Thursday afternoon, we're going to be doing Google search and internet safety basics, and we'll talk about search engine, internet scam, spotting fake news as a new addition by special request, and popular request, I'll say that and keeping yourself safe online, okay? Here's a, a, a full schedule uh, for the rest of the month. And then next week we're gonna be doing, uh, we we'll finishing up the month with internet safety and security, okay? That's our VPN class where we talk about how to use a VPN a little bit and extra security too. And we're gonna uh, do our video creating basics class again on the 26th. I've been doing some video editing with family videos and stuff and I've got a little bit of extra stuff to add to that class. So the good thing about these classes, every time we do it, we learn a little bit more now, don't we? So which ones would I recommend? Usually the newest version of these classes, even though we are kind of archiving them, because usually I've learned something new, have new questions and things that we can add to as well. At the end of the month, we're going to be doing the 27th, we're going to be doing a morning and afternoon gadget help. So stop by there. I'll be live answering any kind of tech questions you have, trying to help out um, in any way I can. We'll be talking about RB Digital stuff 
and stuff you can access to the library too if we don't get uh, many questions okay so definitely stop by for that you're going to have a morning and afternoon chance to be able to ask your questions a little side note here our libraries are open with limited services and hours curbside holds pickup is available you can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please don't forget to like our Facebook pages so you'll be kept up to date. Um, and also like our videos, including this one, please. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, Right now we're on this channel, but the easiest way to find our YouTube channel is GCHRL Videos. Just search that in YouTube and it will pop right up. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to what we're going to be covering today. Well, I'm back. So today we're going to talk about the basics of using Windows 10. Okay, saving, uh, saving stuff, just saving stuff, saving files, <laughs> just saving random stuff, yeah. Uh, just saving <laughs> so files to your uh, flash drive, which is a big question. I always get asked. Um, and also we'll talk about some basic computer maintenance. And also along the way, I'll kind of uh, sprinkle some information about if you're looking to buy a new computer. But if there's anything specific you're interested in, just post it into the chat. Let's see, is that a little bit better? Hold it down a little bit. There we go. Let's see. Oh, there we go. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now I'm actually going to post the handout into our chat so if you have any questions go ahead and post them now The folks will ask about the birds. The birds in the backyard today are very happy. Saw a female cardinal today. And also a blue jay were out there kind of having a little discussion, but they were just kind of hopping around each other. It was kind of funny. All right, so here's the handout. Should be able to view that and download it if you wish. And I'm going to bring it on over. And my plan is I'll actually zoom in as much as I can now. What we do with our classes is we actually have it. So I have a handout, and then basically everybody gets a computer, and then you can kind of follow along. So that's kind of the idea of uh, this, okay? So kind of use this, maybe even a good idea is to basically have me in a separate device, and then you can have your computer in front of you and kind of follow along that way, okay? And I'll be kind of popping in and out, <laughs> but you should be able to hear my voice. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. Let's talk about what we're gonna cover this afternoon. And like I said, feel free to post any com uh, comments or any questions you have into our chat. And if you do come for one of our live videos and you can't ask questions, but definitely feel free to post and share our videos uh, with friends and family and uh, special questions they have too. Do you realize you can actually share a video at a certain point too with uh, YouTube? So I won't go into the settings on that, but there was a certain point in one of my classes that you want to share with the family member, you could actually have it so it auto play right at that second. Okay. Uh, so look into that. I'm not going to cover that right now. Maybe we'll cover that in the YouTube class. There you go. So let's talk about what we're going to cover. We're going to cover the ports on our computer, USB. We'll talk about devices. We'll talk about printers. We'll talk about mouse usage, software, getting around Windows and starting programs. Uh, saving a document, we'll talk about some basic typing, scrolling, zooming, working with windows, and this is kind of a, like a series, so this class, the class tomorrow, 
in the class Thursday afternoon. It's kind of part of a series that we would do at the library we call boot camp class. And the good part about it is it starts off, we cover some of the basics, we kind of uh, step through everything that a lot of folks may not have ever had uh, covering all the steps of using our computer course, printing, using our, our web browsers, doing add-ons, all kinds of stuff like that. General knowledge. Um, and of course, you may know a lot of this if you've used a computer for many years, but some of this may fill in some gaps as well. Okay. We'll talk about viewing and opening files in Windows Explorer. We'll talk about printing and saving money on, on well, um, printing and saving money on ink or saving ink too. We'll talk about what the right mouse button does. And we'll talk about using our flash drive and saving to an external hard drive. We'll also talk about how to copy files by using the drag and drop. And I'll show you the copy paste method too. Drag and drop is most popular. Copy paste can be a little bit easier um, with someone with some dexterity issues or just want to be a little bit more precise. Okay. So we'll talk about keeping your computer running fast and safe. And of course, the best way to turn your computer off. Don't just press and hold the power button. Don't do that. That's not the way you should do that. And uh, <laughs> before we get started here, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. I have my little meter thing jumping up and down every time I talk. And I also have two screens. And the one on the right is the one you guys see. And here's my main laptop here with the camera. So the good part about it is every time I look to the right, it actually looks like I'm looking at what you guys are looking at, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and let's jump into this. Let's talk about our different parts of our laptop and I will disappear so you can see the full screen. So the different parts of our laptop, a big one here is we actually have the power button. It looks like a circle with a line. This is what you'll see on most of your electronic devices, I'll say most. Uh, sometimes you'll be going, where is the power button on this laptop or this tablet or even cell phone? Look for the circle with the line. That's our universal symbol for power. Uh, does it have a DVD, DVD, CD, DVD drive? More and more of our laptops are not having that. And then we have our touchpad here. Okay. Now in class, we'd actually go through popping open the CD DVD drive. Some folks may never really use that much, but still want to know how to use it. And let's talk about our different ports on our computer. Okay. And I will actually, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So we actually have our typical USB port on the side of our computer. But we actually and we actually see this symbol a lot of the time. It looks kind of like a, a tree. If you look at it, we actually have a new port that's coming along. I think I'll show that real quick. Give me one second and I will show that. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. All right, so give me one second here. There 
actually is a new port coming along. Here's USB-C. Here's kind of a little bit of comparison of the two. So you, you may actually have a laptop that does have the new USB-C on it. This is kind of our typical in the past here, USB. And we talk about it actually gives off five volts of power, okay? This is the newer port here, USB-C is much smaller, okay? But you can get a converter to actually convert it back. So if you have anything that is the typical USB, then you can actually use that as well, okay? Big thing is, of course, it gives off five volts of power. So you can use it to charge devices, charge a laptop or something. And of course, like I said, if you see the smaller port, it works the same way as our typical USB. So what devices do our USB, USB-C ports use? You can actually use it for flash drives. Like I said, you can get a little converter thing on there. Uh, uh, I can think I can show that real quick. Yeah, I'll show that real quick. So basically, if you do have a um, the typical USB on your computer, you could actually get a converter to have it switch from USB to USB-C. So this is kind of an example of that. So this is a little bit of a converter, and it goes to the USB-C if you have that on your laptop as well. Okay. To USB to USB C. All right. So they operate the same way, it's just smaller. Gives off five volts of power. You can use it to get converter stuff if you want to. And of course, we're back to printers, plugging in printers, um, iPads to charge, headphones, all kinds of stuff. So again, if you have a device, that use USB-C on it like a lot of our newer laptops do. Do not worry, you can just get a converter and it'll switch it to USB-C, okay? Now let's talk about our HDMI ports as well. And again, some of our newer laptops may not actually have USB HDMI out, but you can get a USB-C to HDMI output converter. So do realize that is available. I know this is a little strange, but yeah, I'm adding this in there because we're kind of moving. Uh, that's what a lot of the manufacturers are moving towards is just having the USB-C on a computer. So if you need more USB, you can get a hub. If you need more USB-C, you can get a hub. If you need USB-C to be normal USB, <laughs> then you can get a converter, okay? Now, if you want your laptop to plug into a TV, you need to look at your laptop and you may, your laptop may have a HDMI plug on it or it may have our dis newer, not new app. Different company will make something called a display port. And of course, like I said, if it's USB-C, you can get a converter. That'll convert it from USB-C to HDMI out. So if your laptop doesn't have an HDMI out, you can get a cable that will do that. The big thing is so that you can plug it into a TV, see it big on the screen, and then there you go, you're good to go. Let's talk about our different devices. So we have different types of mice, okay. Our big one, of course, is our touchpad on our laptop. We also have our external mouse, which of course they can be wireless as well. And we have, you'll see, a trackball, okay. Some people absolutely love the trackball. If you have a friend or family member that has some dexterity issues, they may really like the trackball, or you may want to encourage them to use the, the touchpad or our other option, of course. You really want to make sure that if you are doing the touchscreen, it's not something that you're doing a lot, because it is best to have the 90, 90, 90 rule, 90, bend, 90 degree bend in your knee, 90 degree bend in your back, and 90 degree bend with your elbow to be able to use a mouse in an office environment. You may need to update. I do know that the volume button looks a little different now. Big thing is you may, if you do have an external speakers, you may need to make sure to turn them on, okay? 
So let's talk about printer scan fax, fax machines, okay? So we have our printer, scanner, fax machines. Used to, of course, our printers just printed stuff, okay? It's a flat, this one that I'm showing here on the left is a flatbed scanner, but also it's a printer as well. So this is one way to scan old photos. Uh, when the camera class, or the, excuse me, the photography class, we actually talk about using an app on our phone, the photo scans app, but this gives a little bit more detail, but that's a different way to be able to scan your photos as well. One big thing about this is we also can have different types of scanners. You can have a small little film slide scanner, black and white uh, slides, color slides. They'll have little caddies like this. And also there are separate little printer devices, very, very small little printers. Some people absolutely love those <laughs> because uh, they can do printing at home and you can of course not have to deal with is it crooked or anything like that and you know, with the big using the big papers um, big photo paper okay so let's talk about using our mouse our left mouse button okay also we have our right mouse button big thing about the left and the right the left one is our select button and the right one is like our options menu okay biggest thing to remember left button is select right button brings up an options menu we'll talk about that a little bit later so on the left one uh, depending on where our mouse is our mouse arrow will change okay it'll be an arrow when we want to click on something like a button or most of the time go up to something to click if we want to type something or we can type in that area we'll see what looks like a capital I okay that'll bring up the blinking cursor and here's our hand usually that shows uh, if it's a link or, or the technical term is a hyperlink on a website to click it to go to a different page okay most users only need to use the left mouse button and again this is kind of like if you use a touch uh, touch screen just tap it on the screen okay the mouse only does four things it does a one the first thing it does of course is a single click a left mouse press you can do a double click and I'll show you the three three or four places where you actually do a double click most of the time you don't have a double click okay I mean most of the time you don't need to double click anything just single click it okay double click is a quick left mouse click it's a quick click it's a click click you do it too slowly on short on shortcut programs icons it'll actually think you want to rename it okay if you click and move then it thinks you want to move the icon and I'll show that in a second the right mouse button which we will do a big um, explanation of that later the right mouse button only brings up an options menu and you left click someplace else or you left click to select something on that menu and then that selects something on the menu okay you don't click right mouse button again and like I said some people will use the computer all day long never use the right mouse button but if you do use it in different situations it can make work a little bit faster and we'll talk about that too we talk about copy paste the other thing is the click and drag uh, click hold and drag the aka drag and drop okay left clicking on something dragging your mouse drag your mouse drag your mouse then get it to where you want it to be and then let go okay uh, then a little bit when we start a program I'll of course mess around with our shortcut if it was on a Mac they call them icons because Microsoft will call them one thing and Max will call them something else okay so don't get confused if I say the same thing twice okay let's talk about our software here software of course refers to apps programs app, apps are actually stands for applications word processing stuff word is a is an app a program it's software
If someone says what's an operating system, that's what runs the computer, okay, or an OS. So it pops up and it'll say what what OS is this, especially if you're looking to buy a new computer. Okay. And it'll say yes. <laughs> and the big thing about that, of course, is what operating system is it? So another way to explain that, if it's, it's a portable device, you would say like it's an Android device, meaning that's the operating system on it. If it's an Apple device, it uses OS, okay, or iOS, I should say. So on a PC, it'll say what version of Windows it has, okay. Sorry about that. And it does have the version of Windows on it. Now, a big one about this is, if we don't know a ton about computers, we can actually decide, um, find out how old a computer is, how new a computer is, based on what version of uh, Windows it has on it, okay? So, if we actually look to the computer, we're looking to buy a new computer, we can go to Windows, uh, we can go and see what version of Windows it's running. So I like to tell the story of Uncle Bob. <laughs> so Uncle Bob comes to you and basically says, hey, I got a computer, okay, and I, it's a great computer and I need to sell it. And you like Uncle Bob, but sometimes Uncle Bob may not know the most about tech stuff. And if he can make a quick buck on something, you know he'd do it, okay. So... We go and we say, hey, Uncle Bob, <laughs> how much is, uh, you know, how much you want to sell that computer for? And they go, he goes, okay, well, I'll sell it for you 200 bucks. And he goes, okay, well, maybe I'm not that tech savvy. And I say, Uncle Bob, what, uh, what version of Windows does it have on it? And they pretty much come in and he goes, well, I think it's an older version of Windows. It's like Windows Vista. Well, I can already tell you that's not a current version of Windows. The current versions are still supported by Windows, meaning they're still getting security updates. Windows 10 is the latest one. We skipped a number with Windows 9, okay? So there is no Windows 9. And it goes, well, Uncle Bob, I'm not that interested in that laptop. I know, understand, because that's an old version of Windows and newer version, older computers can't run the newer versions of the, the software. So I don't want that computer, I'm not interested in it. Now, Uncle Bob may go off and come back and say, well, I got a good deal for you, because what, $200 laptop, and it's got Windows 10 on it. I go, okay, well, I might be interested in that, uh, Uncle Bob. I might be interested in that. So tell me a little bit more, you know, about it, okay? So now I might be interested in it, and I'll look into it, a little bit more okay so that's kind of one of the ways to kind of realize how to tell you know what computer is it or how old something is depending on just the operating system, okay? All right, so let's go ahead to our next one here. Let's talk about our Windows desktop, okay? So our Windows desktop, we actually have our recycling bin. Uh, on a Mac, they'll call it the trash can. Okay, and it says the recycling bin on there, and we also have our shortcuts on the background too.
We also have a different wallpaper. So do you realize that someone can use the computer, change the wallpaper, don't let that throw you in any way. <laughs> the wallpaper in the background can look different, okay? So, we also have our start menu on the left side if we click that. Now, Microsoft is talking about doing an update where they're basically gonna start removing these tiles here. I usually don't talk about the tiles much because they're very customizable. You can kind of change it to whatever you want it to be, okay? And uh, so we'll kind of skip over that. The big thing here is, of course, where we have our power button here to turn our computer off. And we also have our most recently added programs and our most recently used programs here as well. Hello, Mac, welcome, welcome, glad you're here. If you have any questions, just let me know. Okay, so the other thing that we have going on is we actually will have a search bar down here. Now, this may not always be a big space like this. It may just look like a little magnifying glass. If you do set it, set it up, your voice commands, you can click here and use Cortana, which is Microsoft version of Siri or Alexa and um, you can click there and ask questions as well. Also in the bottom we actually have our taskbar. Some programs icons will show out or excuse me shortcuts will hang out down here. You don't have to double click them just left click to start. Let's go over here and talk about some of our hidden programs that are located here. Our recycling bin is where when something gets deleted, that's where it's going to go. Um, depending on your settings, it'll automatically erase itself after a while. So it's not a big deal. And if you do want to bring something back, just double click that icon to open it. and It'll say, what do you want to bring back? And there you go. Or undelete, I should say. So here where it says our programs, we could hover over any of those and it'll tell us what it is, okay? There also is one little arrow here and if you hover there, it'll say hidden programs. If I left click that, it'll show some of the programs that are running in the background that I can't see. Later on when we eject our flash drive, that's where we'll go to eject our flash drive, okay? So do you realize that, that the eject setting for our flash drive is hidden underneath the hidden programs um, icon. You can move it move it to a different location but of course I want to teach based on what it'd be like if you got a computer and brought it home you know there. And later on, this is where you can actually click to turn the brightness of your screen up and down as well. Now, big icons that important icons that we'll see is our battery charge. Okay, so if we go down here, and the way my win, my way my screen is, it actually won't show it on mine, but it'll actually show a, a battery power here. This is where you plug it in. It'll tell you how how um, much battery it has left, how long it takes to charge. And also we'll talk about your Wi-Fi signal. This is the Wi-Fi signal here. How do you connect to a new Wi-Fi? Uh, let's say if you brought your laptop to the library, you can click there and our library is called Bookworm. Okay, so basically you left click this icon. It'll say searching for connections. Left click where it says bookmark and say connect. And if it says to always, recon always connect to this, then you won't have to worry about it again. That's when it first will ask you for a password if you go to, let's say, maybe a coffee shop, maybe if you're at home uh, connecting for the first time because usually our, our um, computer will actually remember what I, that big long password is. And if we do go to a co uh, most McDonald's, most Starbucks will actually have Wi-Fi there. They do it a little bit differently like a hotel 
you click the Wi-Fi it'll give the Wi-Fi name you connect to it and then usually a browser will open up if you're at a hotel it may say what ho what room you're in what's your last name or something and then you click you know connect that way if you're at a Starbucks McDonald's it'll do something similar on at most of those so realize there the password may not be something you put in the Wi-Fi here but when your browser opens it may be something you put in there okay here's our volume right here so we basically click the volume um, the sound and then it'll actually has a slide bar that slides up and down our action center there's my here's my calculator right excuse me calculator our calendar that's right there so we click our calendar and if you click the action notification center that's where we can actually turn our screen up and down on brightness okay all right so let's go ahead and let's open up our first program I'm going to show you two ways to open our first program and the first one is to click start okay and find where it says Microsoft Word if you're in the newer version of Word it actually will be clicking start and we scroll down the newer version of Word doesn't put it in its own folder it actually just saves it as Word okay the other thing is is let me let me uh, let me get out of this the other way to do it as well is if you actually have the icon on your desktop and then all we do is we go here and we do a double left mouse click a quick click a click click and then it'll open it for us mine says good afternoon Good afternoon to you too, Mr. Word. Now let's go ahead and let's click where it says blank document. And we have a whole Word class that we would cover. Let's go back to our handout. But we're just kind of covering the basics of our using Windows 10 right now. So basically you want to click where it says blank document. A big one is to go ahead and give your document a name. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go up to File and hit Save. And we have one extra step. Let's click Browse. Now, when we save something, do you realize that? Uh, it tries to save it into the documents folder documents folder for Excel PowerPoint when we hit save that's where the default is going to save okay uh, what is the documents folder it's mostly for us to be able to have um, all our documents all our files in one place if we're trying to save a photo it may try to save it into the photos folder okay uh, mostly just realize that inside the computer is like a big file cabinet so it's many many files many many folders going on and we'll talk about navigating those later okay it pops up right here it says it wants to call it document one I mean excuse me document two I don't want to call it that today is the 18th so because it's blue we can go ahead and start typing I'm gonna type class 18 2020 okay and then we hit save and how do I know it's saved because if we look at the very very top up here it says class 18 2020 and I know it's saved now the newer version that I'm using today um, of Word it actually has an auto save up here on the top left which I have on just realize that any kind of changes you make unless you have the auto save or whatever <laughs> Need to go up here and either click file save again or you can come up here to our little floppy diskette click file and then hit save right there realize anything in windows in general little icons or whatever we take our mouse we hover over it it should pop up and give us a, a little bit of a preview about what it is so if we take my mouse and i hover over the big uh, capital b what does it say?
it says bold, doesn't it? Okay. All right, so let's go back to our handout. So we saved our document, we gave it a name. Now let's talk about getting around Word. We've got our title at the top, okay. We talked about the newest version has the auto save on it. You may or may not have that version. We talked about hovering over our icons. And we also want to talk about our tab system a little bit. More and more of our programs are using this system, so do realize that you may see instead of drop down menus, the tab system, or Microsoft calls it the ribbon. So if we just kind of click here, you'll see the whole menu changes. And on the newest version, which is what this is in Word, they don't call it spell check anymore. Why, I don't know, but they call it editor. <laughs> so if you are looking for spell check, you can hit the F7 function key and it'll still come up. But do you realize the spelling and grammar now The spelling and grammar now is under editor okay I know that's weird it's weird for me too okay so let's go back let's click home tab and it'll take us back to our main section okay all right so a big thing is we want to talk about where the blinking cursor is now if we look down at our keyboard, you've probably used the computer before and seen the keyboard. If we look down at our keyboard, what keys do we have? Here's our blinking cursor right there. That's where everything that we're going to have, um, you know, wherever the blinking cursor is. <laughs> hello, Dr. Emmy. Glad you're here too. Good, good, good. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. So let's talk about our our keyboard, okay? So to do a capital letter, we have to hold down Shift and then do a letter. Now the interesting part about our keyboard in general is even though we're not dealing with having to have a mechanical part, we still have our keyboard that looks like a typewriter, okay? And the other interesting part about that to me is moving forward and ahead now we have virtual keyboards on our tablets, iPads, phones, and it's still the same layout. So the big question I usually get in class is why is the keyboard laid out this way? We're not 100% sure, but the man that designed this layout with the letters and stuff um, realized that um, did not think he was finished because he actually designed three other layouts with our letters but this is the one that kind of stuck and most of the typewriter companies made so it got pushed forward into the future technology now it's on the, the computers and now it'll be on our devices even though your virtual keyboard you can rearrange it any way you want and some people will even have it switched to ABCD but most won't because when they sit in front of a laptop or a computer they want to be able to use the same keyboard layout okay so just realize that we're not 100% sure why the letters in this order but again like I said the man that invented this order invented three other orders after this so he did not feel like he was finished okay so we actually have our backspace key we that deletes to the left we have our delete key which deletes to the right of the blinking cursor of course we have the enter key on a Mac it may say enter or return that's the way you really need to think about the enter key. It's the enter return key. So if you're typing something in Word, now it's the return key. And if you're typing in something to go to a website, you hit the enter key to say go, okay? Uh, a lot of the newer keyboards may not have the down and to the left arrow on the enter return key, but do realize that it's still, that's what its function is. We also have our caps lock key on there as well. And what about our function keys? Those are the F keys above all the other letters. 
uh, excuse me, all abo above all the numbers and letters, and mostly those are program specific, unless you're doing a function like turning the volume up and down or something on your computer. Okay. A lot of our computers may not have the number keys on the right side. Of course, you can use the numbers above there, and do realize you can use the arrow key to move the cursor around. But to go down to the next line, and I minimize that, sorry. But to go down to the next line, if I type hello, which we're going to type something, just say it, and I hit enter, return key, it takes me down to the next line. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and let's type something. And I'm going to cheat because I can. And I'm going to do a quick copy paste. But that's the three, the two lines I want y'all to type. So that when we mess around with our or our letters and stuff, we'll actually have something to work with. Backspace, backspace. Now, when you get to the end of your line here, of course, you need to hit the enter return key to go down to the next line. And why can't I go down any further? You just had to hit the enter return key and it'll put it in, in an invisible in paragraph mark so you can go down to the next line, okay? In the word class, we go in more into that and everything, but there you go right there. So if you're following along at home, go ahead and just type those two lines there. And let's go back to our handout. The quick red fox tried to jump over the bush. The fox slipped and was covered in thorns. Okay, so let's talk about scrolling and zooming. Okay, not a zoom call, <laughs> but actually zooming in and out of our screen. Okay. So big thing, of course, is we have our scroll bars. And I will tell you this, a lot of the new setup, the way Microsoft is setting um, our programs up is that the scroll bar may actually be invisible. Mine is actually showing right now. So you might actually be uh, surfing the internet. You may be using um, the internet, the Microsoft Edge browser. Oh, there it is. So if you if you look on the far right, the scroll bar has actually disappeared. I'm not a big fan of this because I feel like some folks, unless you 100% knew it was there, may go, okay, what am I supposed to do? But if I move my mouse over to there, we can actually see the scroll bar is there. The scroll down. So we're going to talk about different ways of doing this. If I tap the arrow down, it'll scroll down. I can tap, 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 or press and hold. It'll scroll all the way to the bottom, okay? To go back up to the top, we go to our arrow, tap, 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 or left click hold. The other way to do it is if I go in to the bar, I left click hold, and I can drag it down, and then go back up very quickly, okay? Hello Mac, yes it does. But with the newer version, it's actually called Editor. Not a huge fan of calling it Editor, but that's what they call it. If you go up here to Review, and editor is in the same place that spelling and grammar used to be. All right, so if I do use the arrow keys to go up and down that way, now let's talk about zooming in that way. All right, 
So this is kind of, we're talking about working with Windows. Uh, Windows allows us to basically re -or, um, enlarge, hide, shrink windows um, inside, uh, excuse me, using the minimize, maximize, and the restore button. Okay, so if I basically just have my Word open, we have our, uh, now Microsoft actually has some extra buttons here. So we're actually going to ignore this one here. This is just an extra button. Okay, but our first one we have here looks kind of like a dash. If we hover over it, it should pop up and say minimize. So go ahead and click that, and then it looks like it disappeared. Okay, so hiding a window, we click the minimize button. Now, where did it go? It is down here. There's Word there. And if I do have more than one Word open, one Word file open at the same time, it does a preview. And then I just left click the one I want and it'll um, enlarge it for me. Okay. So how do I actually do our next feature? Well, the next button will actually change. If we hover in the middle here, it'll pop up and say restore down. Now I actually like to refer to this as middle mize. Okay. Mostly because it kind of makes a little bit more sense than just saying uh, the restore down. <laughs> so this button will change. I'm gonna go ahead and click this. And you see it kind of puts it in the middle. Okay, I call this middle mize. Now, a big thing to remember is that if you close the program and it's this size, when you restart your computer and you click on the program again, it will not be full screen. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that in just a, just a minute. Um, but you can actually, whatever size, okay. I know sometimes with our phones and stuff, we kind of get involved with, with jumping back and forth, but when we actually sit down, you know, unlike a tablet or something, unless it's one of the Microsoft Surface tablets, you can't really see two things at one time. So it is nice to sit down at a, um, a PC, a Mac or something, and Mac have similar buttons, but they're on the left side uh, to be able to resize, have two screens open at the same time, a lot more customization. Now, how do I make it big again? Okay, we want to maximize it, don't we? Well, the way we maximize it is we go up here and we hover over the same button. Now the button changes, it only has two modes, but it does change and now if you hover over it, it should say maximize. So if I click maxim the button maximize, boom, it's full screen again. Okay. Again, these are these are features somebody might work a nine to five job somewhere and they never really use the 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 middle mize or the restore down section. It's okay, and maybe they just kind of pop from window to window or they just work on one program all day. Well, there you go. But you may or may not use this, but you need to know because you may use this computer with someone else. So if I start a word and it looked like this, and I'm, I'm trying to sit here and type something, and if I didn't know to, how to maximize it, then that's the size it'll be at, okay? If someone else uses it at that size, it'll remember it. So I don't want that to be you. <laughs> I want you to be able to know how to resize, move, and maximize those windows, okay? Now, the last one we'll talk about is our close, okay? Closing the window, make sure it completely closes the program. This is one of those things of if you do have a bunch of windows open, something that's not saved when you turn your computer off, it may pop up and say, you can't turn, um, you can't turn the computer off because things are still open in the background. Well, make sure you close them and make sure that you have saved them as well. So, I've added stuff to my, um, I'm, I know it's on auto save, there you go. But if I go down here and I just add hello, I haven't saved my document, and I hit the exit, it'll pop up and say, do you want to save the changes to your document? I can hit save and it'll still close. I can say don't save. I remember the last time I saved and I don't want to add this part. Or I could actually hit cancel as well, meaning never mind. But it auto should auto save everything. But it does have, it's still kind of set to every 15, 5 minutes. It kind of depends 
on what the settings are. There actually is a Windows, I mean, excuse me, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint do have a rescue feature. So if your power does die and you start restart your computer, over here on the left side it'll say your document, this document was retrieved or rescued. You can left click it and reopen it. Okay. So I'm going to say save and then the, it closes and that means that that program is closed. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about our big things that folks will ask is how can I find a file after I made it? Okay. Well, there's several ways that we can do it. One way we can do it is we can actually go and double click on Word. Okay. We start our Word program. And it'll actually will pop up here and where it says recent, it'll actually show the files that we've opened. Okay. You click that and it'll open the file. Now let's talk about our other ways. It'll appear under recent documents. If you don't see it, you can do open to look for more documents. A big one, of course, is to know the name of the file that you're looking for. Now, you could go to one of the easiest ways, I believe, and it actually will not show on my screen. I just have to talk about it. But if I go down here, and you either you'll have a search bar or you'll have here where it says type to search. If I click that, okay, good, it did show up. Okay, so if I type that and then I say, class 18 this is our search it searches the entire computer sometimes I don't have this pop up here which is interesting but I actually have my search and it says best match is right here I just click on it or I could hit enter on the keyboard now it does have sections if you're looking for a document, it'll it'll kind of show everything here, okay? But if you're looking for something specific and this isn't showing exactly what it is, you could add more keywords to it. Click document or you click apps here. It will search the internet or bing.com uh, for information if you just type in a question. But you can also not only get it to search for files, you can actually get it to search for programs too. So if I click this search and say Word, it'll actually pull up the word program I click that and then boom it's going to open word for me okay so not only can we use this search to find documents if we know the name of it and kind of be general with the name and then get more specific because it'll give suggestions and uh, you can also search for programs as well okay so again I'm going to change it to class 18 and then I'll just hit enter and then boom there's our document the red fox tried to jump over the bush and there's the hello that I just wrote okay now let's keep going on with our handout here a big one I get asked about is I want to open up a find an old document you would not believe how many times I have people say well I made a file and I go great and now I can't find it and I go oh no <laughs> do you know the name of it and they're like kinda I kinda know the name of it I'm like okay well the name is the best way to find it first that's a good idea is when you give when you save a file give it a lot of information uh, it can be more than a hundred characters um, the file name can be so you don't have to just say you know document one or something give it a little bit more information so it's easier to find later okay alright so we have a goal we opened up the old file and we're going to talk about save as people still ask me what exactly is save as so here we go so what if I found out that I need to make a change in my document and the fox was not red but he was actually gray okay not a red fox but an actual gray fox So what do I need to do? 
I need to resave the document. Uh, make I need to make changes to it. Change it from red to gray, and I need to resave the document. Now I could hit save, which will save it right on the same name. Okay, but I don't want to do that. Resave the document. I want to use save as. Okay, I want to use save as, and I want it there to be a separate document now called gray. So it'll be class 18, 2020. Um, regular and then class 18 2020 gray okay save as is a great feature especially if you're going to do things like paper revisions or if you're going to have different versions of a document you could make it your own uh, template set up or template set up maybe it's something that you just need to change the first uh, word of something and that's a good idea to do it that way and just get save as save as so let's talk about that. So if I go and I say, you know what? It wasn't red. Now, of course, I can left click to get there if I want to and do backspace, or I could use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move the blinking cursor around, hit backspace, and then gray. Now I'm going to go up to file and do save as browse and instead of it just saying class I'm gonna have it say gray now what is the doc uh, doc X that just means that's the file extension of your file means it's a word document file that's all that means and I'll hit save and then when we look at the top it'll say class 18 2020 gray dot doc x okay now we actually have two files and we're going to use the file explorer to view those files okay so we actually have a class 18 2020 and we have a class uh, 18 2020 gray okay so where the fox is red in the first one the second one now the fox is gray now let's talk about our file explorer. All right, with our file explorer, we actually click this folder right here. Okay, usually it's on the desk, the, the desktop. Mm, usually it's on the taskbar area. If you hover over to say file explorer, if you are using the computer with someone else or someone else's computer, they may have removed that. So do realize that you may have to do the search for file explorer or you do the start and then just scroll down uh, do, 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 and I passed it there it is oh hang on best to do the search I think it might be under Windows systems and all that yeah there it is under Windows system file explorer so the best thing to do is just click search and just say file explore okay or click click it if it's down there all right, so let's talk about our file explorer. Is a storm going on outside? So if my internet's cutting in and out, I am sorry, uh, but there is a storm outside. <laughs> Lots of rumbling. I don't know if you could have hear, heard the lightning or not. Maybe not lightning, but I don't know if you could hear the thunder or not, but um, it is going on outside a little bit, okay? Hope you're staying safe where you are, uh, uh, CSRA. <laughs> I do have a green screen. I could do a weather forecast at some point if we wanted to, right? Okay, so let's talk about what we have with our file explorer here. We have our toolbars at the top, okay? Title bar, navigation here on the left side. We also do have a search box here. This can be very specific to that certain folder. So again, if you're going to be searching for a file, you know the name of it, still probably best to go down here to our main search. Used to, I would teach for this, but the, the main search, it's so easy. It's just right there, click it, type, start typing in the name. It usually finds whatever file that you're looking for, okay? I feel like that's one of the big uh, improvements that they added to um, 
to uh, the, the Windows in general. Believe it or not, that actually was uh, available with Windows 8. But not a lot of people used it because it was, um, you know, very touchscreen heavy. So a lot of swiping it wanted you to do. Okay, so. So if we look at the bottom here, we actually can see something called a display section where we show our files in different display modes. One of them is the details mode and then the large icon mode, okay? Oh. Now we do have a menu. So if we go up here and click home, it, the menu will be dropped down. Um, and again, I wanna teach by default. So with Windows Explorer by default, the menu is not um, available. Okay, when we look at our files, we actually have a menu up here. Okay, so if we actually hit home, the menu kind of drops down. In the view section, you can actually have it, or is it the pen? Anyway, it's up here somewhere. You can actually have it set so it shows that, uh, that menu all the time. See show below, but by default, it's not there all the time. But again, this is where you can do copy paste and everything. And I'll give some instructions uh, based on this too. So a big one is let's talk about our different sections here on the left side. And because mine may be a little different on my computer, I'll just kind of go by what the default is with our change view. Okay. So look, on the left side here, we actually have our quick access. Okay. So with our quick access, this is kind of the most, uh, the, the, the folders that people use probably the most. And if you do use some of these folders a lot, saving to, they will actually pop up and uh, start adding some of those. You can pin by clicking the little pin here. Um, pin some of those to your, that you use a lot to kind of hang out here if you want to. But again, I'll kind of go by the default. <gasps> Excuse me the default one so first one is our quick access it'll kind of show most recent files that you've looked at but if you click the downloads folder that will actually show you the files that you have downloaded now by default by factory default meaning uh, what the company set up what Microsoft has set up when you download something with the web browser it's supposed to save it into the downloads folder okay so have you ever clicked on a file? And this will even happen to me. Uh, if you clicked on a file and then you go, well, where did it go? And you go, oh, well, did you tell it to save in a different folder? No, I just told it to download file. Well, it probably saved it to the downloads folder. How do you access that? Well, you can access it through the browser or you may go here, click downloads and it'll show all the folders all, excuse me, all the files and folders in the downloads folder, okay? So that's how you see your files when you download. Uh, what about the document folder? Click there and there's also one called desktop uh, as well. So if I actually did click the desktop folder there, that will show me all the files that I actually have saved to the desktop and the shortcuts or icons to the different programs as well. There's some folks that will save a lot of files to the desktop that's what our background is it's where our wallpaper is so just realize that some folks will do that you may work with someone and they say oh i saved the file to the uh, desktop this is one way of accessing that as well what about the documents folder you click documents that's where our main folders are with all our files okay we have all these folders files in there how do we create new files how we create new, um, how do we access that, kind of go back and forth. Well, we go up to the home and then that'll actually allow me to, so if I click, let's see, I click documents, I can go up here, click home, and then it actually will allow me to collect new folders. If I'm in a folder and I want to get out of the folder, I can click the back button here and it'll take me out of the folder, okay? All 
All right, what about pictures? Well, if I look at my pictures folder, I want to see the little icons, okay? So how do I change my view back and forth? This is quite clustered for some reason. Why is it all clustered together? There we go. Hmm. Make the font size a little smaller. Come on. A little smaller. There we go. I'll move that down a little bit too. Okay. All right, looks a little better. Okay, so the big thing here is that we actually have two settings. So we have our thumbnail view, and we actually have our details view. Okay. Now, what are the di what's the difference? And I'll show this first. So the details view, you can actually see the name of everything. Okay, and it'll show date modified as well. Now, if you click name, it'll actually show it alphabetical, A to Z. Click it name again, it'll show Z to A. If you want to organize your files based on the date, click where it says date modified, and it'll actually show them by the date. So if you have a file and you're going, I'm trying to get a new file here. So I'm actually going to <laughs> I'll actually create a folder and call it new folder and it'll make it a little bit easier for us to look at our all our files on here okay so that'll make it a little bit easier okay so on my computer I go to documents and I go to Right now I have it set to date modified if I switch it around and let's double click on a folder. There we go. So now everything seems a little bit more clean. So basically I'm in a folder called new folder. If I want to exit a folder, I click there and double click is how I get into the folder. Okay. So remember we double click the icon on the desktop. We double click to get in a folder here. And if you want to open one of these files, which we'll talk about in just a second, I double click one of these files and it'll automatically open it up with that program. So that's three ways to use our double click. Now, if we want, oh, I wanted to show that. So if we want to organize it, we can click name, it'll show it A to Z. If you want to do it by time, there you go, created today. Okay it'll organize it that way. Now, let's talk about our different views. So if I go down here, right now I'm on details view, I can click here and it'll show the icon view. Some people like this, I don't like this too much because it doesn't show the date, okay? Now I will tell you this, it will remember the last setting it was on, okay? So if you are using the computer with somebody else and you click like the pictures folder and all of a sudden it's not showing the the um, the shortcut, excuse me, it's not showing the, the, the thumbnails, then you may need to go down here and click here and it'll show it in thumbnail view, okay? So if you want a different view, go up here, click view, and you can actually choose. There's a bunch of different views that you can do. Main one is details and then large icons, okay? And that's what these two buttons are set up for here to do, okay? Documents, you really want to set on details. Photos, you want to set on thumbnails. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to double click on our file and open it. We'll talk about printing a little bit. And then we'll talk about our flash drive. Yay! Okay, so let's go ahead and since we have our file here, I'm going to go ahead and open up the first one. And 
there's our file and let's talk about printing so we click file we're going to hit print and then basically this is going to pop up let's talk about our different sections here then we'll talk about putting our file on our flash drive so basically where it says pages mostly it's set to print all pages if we click on pages we could tell it to print one specific page if we want to it will show us a little bit of a print preview okay let's say we want to print pages one through five just type in there you go one dash five okay what about one three seven and five put commas in the way and it'll take care of that as well now I'm not actually connected to a printer so I can't really tell you uh, exactly how to do this um, because every printer is a little bit different oh um, one thing as well is if you do want to print on both sides you can click the little drop down here and it'll basically talk about it used to use the term duplexing but it does use some common um, vocabulary now <laughs> print on both sides choose that you take it to print all the odd pages pull it out put it back in your printer this may take um, you know to figure out exactly how your printer wants you to do it it may have to play around with it some but then you will be able to print on both sides at home the other thing is controlling the ink okay so do you see where it says um, printer properties here I'm not connected to a printer right now that's ink when you're printing you may not even notice um, when printing um, the other thing is that there's a section where you can choose of course the color or you can choose grayscale for quality will not be as good as putting it in grayscale but either of those will use less ink of course saying the quality is uh, probably best to save money that way so that's really kind of some easy ways to save money with printing all right so let's talk about our right mouse click just a little bit big thing with the right mouse click is depending on what you're clicking on as you can see here even if I right mouse click on the start button you'll see that it shows a different menu if I right mouse click a different menu will pop up how do I choose what's on that menu I left click what's on that menu to choose it if I right mouse click again it only ever brings up an options menu okay and depending where your mouse is it will be different okay all right so let me show you real quick since we have our file open here one neat thing that's available with Word is to actually use our thesaurus. Okay. Let's say we go up to jump. If I right click on jump, we actually, an easy way to access our thesaurus is to basically go to hover where it says synonyms and it will give us other suggestions. Okay. We can go to up here and go to the full thesaurus if we want to. But if we just want to do this real quick so right click on the word jump go to synonyms and we're going to say leap and if you choose one of these it'll change it and now it's leap and let's go to quick to try again so right click quick hover to synonyms swift the swift red fox tried to leap over the bush I like that the swift red fox tried to leap over the bush this is even a good idea if you're going to uh, use this type something here uh, copy it and put it into a, a different document maybe you're going to email it somewhere to use the thesaurus and kind of expand the vocabulary a little bit okay so let's talk about putting our files in our flash drive I won't go into this too much just kind of realize that our files uh, sizes uh, have different um, size uh, calculated 
There's bits and bytes, kilobytes. Um, just know that those are very, very small. Mostly we may hear, hear terms like megabytes. Gig, and of course, if we're gonna go purchase a flash drive, a hard drive or something, we'll say gigabyte or even terabyte, okay? So what exactly does that mean to us? Really, just kind of think about megabyte is million, gigabyte is billion, and terabyte is trillion. Uh, the math isn't exactly that, but it's close enough to just kind of give you a, a good insight to what the different sizes mean. So we go down here to our chart. This isn't a perfect chart uh, because everybody's photos, songs, documents, videos can have different qualities. So even if it is, but this is just kind of a uh, rule of thumb. So you don't really go to the store and buy any flash drives that say uh, megabytes on them, but you may still have some laying around the house or something. Uh, do you realize you can put lots of documents on there? <laughs> but as far as songs, photos, and of course getting into video, um, you're going to really want something a lot bigger. Okay. Our photos, they talk about now. We take a picture, our photos are about three, three and a half um, megs. Okay. So that's even bigger than uh, our little chart shows here to be able to put something on. So you're storing a lot of stuff like photos, but if you're just using documents, then even if it seems like it's a small flash drive, you can probably store a lot of things on there, okay? Videos are the ones that take up the most. So if you're taking, again, trying to get a, a memory card for your like Android phone or maybe even a camera, the bigger, uh, the better, um, the more that you can get, the better, okay? Just so that you'll have lots of room. Uh, of course, a big thing is to always remember to back up your data. Uh, note is to have it in two places, okay? Have it on your computer, email it to yourself, have it on your computer, put it on a flash drive, have it on your computer, put it on an external hard drive, uh, back up your photos to the cloud, even if you have them on your camera, your phone that has the camera on it. So try to always have it in two places, just so in case something happens at one place, you'll have the, the photos, the videos, the data, the documents in another place, okay? I think that's about as simple as I can make it. Have it in two places, okay? So talking about saving uh, files to media, okay? Many may not uh, save stuff to uh, DVD or CDs anymore, but you may still want to. CD and DVDs are very cheap. Uh, to of course put stuff on and most of our computers have CD DVD drives will have a CD DVD burner okay as far as a blu-ray burner that's something that um, would be very specific to to uh, you know whatever computer it is that you're using hmm, I don't know why I was doing that anyway hmm. There we go. Ah, there we go. Made that a little bit more sound, easy to read. Of course, one problem is our CD, DVDs can scratch, but it is, again, if you're trying to do the rule of having stuff backed up, there you go right there. So we're kind of putting stuff more and more on our flash drives because our memory has gotten bigger and bigger. Uh, do realize that uh, one of the things is a flash drive, uh, SD card for a memory card, a micro SD card is basically all the same technology. Um, and I won't go into that too much, but you can get like little caddies and they can kind of switch back and forth if you want them to. Okay. And there are ways that you can even get uh, little plugs for your micro SD card to plug it right into a USB if you need to. So all that is very universal. Um, you know using and it's main our main memory cards now so we don't have to worry about different brands and all that like we used to a big thing is to actually have external data okay external or or portable hard drives you know like there's a comma there okay external hard drives and everything or portable hard drives so this is kind of like a hard drive basically from a laptop 
It will probably have moving parts unless it's an SSD, one of the newer types of hard drives, uh, or a terabyte, you know, terabyte here, gigs we're talking about here. Uh, the negative part is if it does have moving parts, hard drives do go bad. SSD hard drives will go bad too. The biggest thing is to, if it's acting strange, if it's not read, to keep its little, little parts of it in the end part of it that goes into the computer, kind of clean and safe, so it kind of switches in and out. Realize that these can actually be uh, different physical sizes, okay? So don't let that throw you if you see one that's really, really small, okay? So we're basically going to take it, we're going to plug it into our computer. Okay, good. We should hear some of those nice little sounds uh, beeping going on and everything. Depends on if your sound is on, uh, then you can hear that you did plug it in, okay? And I'm getting a message that I did plug in something into the computer. All right, our biggest one here is we're going to talk about saving. We're going to talk about using the copy paste method, which is a really easy thing to use. And then we'll talk about the drag and drop method. Okay. So the copy paste method is, and I'll disappear so I'm not in the way. Basically, we select our file that we want, select the file we want, we click the home. We click copy. We're going to click the removable disk or whichever it calls. They've kind of gone to just calling it. Um, now my computer actually does not have a CD DVD drive uh, plugged in. Of course, if you did want to have an external CD DVD drive, you can buy one of those pretty cheaply and it just plugs into the USB. Okay. So my, my drive letters may actually be different than yours. We click that. We click home and then we click where we want it to be and then we hit paste okay so let me pull up and we'll show that okay so we've got our flash drive here and one of the things that kind of happens and I'll talk about this more in just a second on the left side here if there's any folders that are open and this is primarily what you'll see on your computer okay you'll see the quick access you'll see OneDrive which we don't use unless you have a Microsoft account you'll get some cloud space with that but um, I personally use the Google Drive more than I do that so I actually don't have any files on that you'll see this PC you'll also see when you plug it in what the letter is remember the letters can change okay USB drive or if it networked on the computer this is only really for people that are at a business so you may not really use this at all. So al already we have a few here that we're not concerned about. So if we actually go here to where it says USB drive, so let's pretend we were somewhere and someone said here, here's a file. Here's a file, um, you know, here's some pictures on here. Here's something, you go, okay, great, thank you so much. And I wanna see what's on there, you click here and this is from a previous class double click that and it'll open up and let me see what's on there okay now if I want to go back to my documents and remember we made our own folder whoop called new folder and first way that we could do this I guess it's automatically opening that first way we could do that is the click the click copy um, click copy paste so if I left click here and I click home, I click copy, I click where I want it to go, and then I hit home again, which will bring up the menu, and then click paste, it'll put it right there, and there it is, okay? That's the quick click copy paste method, okay? Now, let's do the drag and drop, which most people, this is what they use, but I want to show you that there's more than one way uh, to do it as well, okay? Now, 
what we need to do is we need to make sure that when we're dragging it over here we don't accidentally hover over a folder that may open and it tries to put it in the wrong place okay so don't hover over any folders that you don't want to drop drop it into okay so I'm gonna go back and we go to documents and we go new folder where it says gray documents now if I left click hold and drag and I, if I hover over any of these wrong folders like it says this PC oh no I've hovered in the wrong place oh, oh, ah. and the scary part is it may actually say move okay so if we actually hover in the wrong place it say move the, fo the file not just copy it so how do I go back don't let go go back over here so because I hovered in the wrong area it'll actually start to try to open up all these different other folders that we have so how do we close that we go up here and it's not always there as you see there it's not there now if we move a mouse over there left click here it'll actually close all that back the best thing to do is to use like an L shape so if I left click hold drag here get completely parallel with where I want it to go then we go over here we hover over the folder it'll say copy to USB D Drive let go and then when we click that it actually will pop up and there it is okay so that's really the best way that I recommend to go and if you need to close any of these just realize you click the little arrow to the left of those do the drag and drop and then we can see there's our files um, right there that we did today okay so which is your favorite method uh, do you prefer the copy paste okay do you prefer the drag and drop most folks in class will say they prefer the drag and drop that's fine whichever one you want to do just make sure you're not accidentally dropping it or sometimes like I showed you it'll say move instead of copy um, so make sure you're not accidentally moving the file someplace else if that did happen um, you could actually do the undo or you could do a search for that file and hopefully it'll pull it up and you can find it that way now I can't actually show you this because of the way I have the computer set up but we'll have to talk about it remember earlier I actually talked to you about uh, now if it was the same it would be in this area it looks like a little up air arrow click that click eject flash disk um, remember it's hidden you want to click where it says safely remove and eject media now how does that actually work well if it's important enough which most of our data is important we should actually eject our flash drive mine actually says eject cruiser glide because it's the name of the company and then I'll yep I get a nice little noise that says now it's safe to remove our hardware and then I can actually remove the flash drive and there you go right there so that's saving that's safely removing as well so why shouldn't I just pull a flash drive out well if you're still saving the file to it or if the computer is accessing it and you just yank it out it is possible it could corrupt the file that's on here so you should properly eject it why is it hidden behind this little arrow thing kind of in this area of the taskbar you can move it out of that area but again that's the default so I'm teaching you uh, by way of default of doing that make sure you eject your flash drive or at least maybe your computers off when you yank out your flash drive okay so let's say you're archiving some really important videos family videos stuff like that you want to make sure that um, you eject it properly just in case anything did get corrupt in any way okay let's talk about some of this and then we'll actually talk about tomorrow about protecting ourselves with viruses and stuff protection we kind of have a bit of a of a definition going on here about what spyware is and other malware software um, that could be uh, accessed or excuse me could be on your computer how do we fight this worms viruses uh, malware well big thing is to make sure that your Windows uh, computer is up to date okay your computer should automatically update 
if you do want to kind of push it you just do the search and say Windows just type in search Windows update click that this will actually pop up and it'll say that it actually has done a search if it says it needs to restart the computer go ahead and do that some of the major updates that happen it'll actually pop up and say hey um, you need to restart the computer and it may need to do it a few times okay but there's your checking and if it is getting kind of annoying you can pause the update for seven days by clicking there okay so that's just doing the search here and say Windows update what are some other things to do make sure that you do have an antivirus program running one of the things that can happen is that someone will get a new computer and say this is great I got a new computer and it actually says something to the effect of that it has like a Windows um, not Windows but it actually has uh, like Norton comes with it and it says hey this is free for a year or something and then you're like this is great the year passes Norton is, is still scanning but it's not downloading new updates for your definitions and everything and you think you're protected but you're actually not and it pops up and says hey we want you to pay the money for the subscription you're like no just ignore that it's actually better to uninstall Norton or McAfee or one of those if you're not going to subscribe to them and let the Windows um, Security Essentials take over and do that it's better to do that because it won't download any new definitions or updates another program that's really great is if you're having some specific pro problems with some adware on your computer um, not just virus stuff is to try malware bytes it's free um, you know just use the free version it just runs when you run it and that can help fight malware but also make sure that you do have your antivirus program running it doesn't conflict if you are using your computer and you need to um, uninstall the program this is basically how you do that the biggest thing is to not uninstall programs that uh, you're not familiar with okay so if it does say um, you know it looks like a system file or something only really uninstall programs that you know that there is a program you installed or it's something like a toolbar or something just do a little bit of research into that so this will if you go to the control panel programs and features it'll show all the programs installed on the computer so don't want to make sure you don't uninstall something you shouldn't so let's talk about turning our computer off and then we'll actually wrap up class okay or should I say we'll be wrapping up class <laughs> it's actually gotten a little bit dark outside because I guess it's uh, preparing for a little bit of a storm coming so how should we properly turn our computer off well we should go on again okay sleep typically will allow the a lot of the by default if we close the lid of our laptop that's the kind of mode it goes into is sleep mode um, setting that it has to do okay now, I may be cutting in and out because of the storm here um, which I'm sorry so it's saying disconnect reconnecting <laughs> so I'm sorry if it's cutting in and out a little bit but of course we have the handout and I'm just kind of covering our handout here hibernation is something you have to turn on uh, sleep mode can still use the battery so if you are planning on going somewhere don't put your laptop into sleep mode and just stick it in a bag because it is still using power and it kind of can get very suffocated in the bag you want to make sure that you completely turn your computer off by doing shutdown or doing the extra feature of hibernate hibernate completely turns the computer off it doesn't use any power and when you turn your computer back on it'll go back in the same mode that it was before okay so really that's kind of our class so we covered the kind of the basics of Windows 10 we also covered putting files on a flash drive uh, kind of things to look for when you're buying a new computer I do know that um, Intel is coming out with a new processor uh, right now the uh, generation 10 is the one that you really want to look for 
uh, if you're buying a new computer right now and again we talked about if your hard if your laptop doesn't have a CD DVD drive do realize you can get a USB one and a lot of the new computers will have the USB C because it's faster and it's smaller and you can get converter cables to convert um, back and forth so we've actually covered a lot this afternoon we covered the different ports of our computer USB USB C devices printers we're talking about using our mouse we talked about software we talked about operating systems <laughs> Windows 10 and everything Thought about getting started with Windows, saving our documents, doing some basic typing. We talked about scrolling and using our Zoom, working with our Windows, minimize, uh, restore down or minimize that I like to call it, maximize and then close. We found a, a document that we had been saved. We edited it. We talked about save as. We talked about viewing our documents. Also in the um, home button, you can actually that's where you can actually go to delete files as well so if you were in the if you were here you click a file click home and that's where delete is that's where rename is those are the two things I'll get asked and also that's where we talked about we said new folder want to delete a file click there hit home there's delete there's rename okay there's other options in there as well but that's really the main ones people ask we talked about printing, saving money uh, with using it on draft or fast draft. Right click mouse a little bit. Like I said, there's many people that use the computer every single day and they never use the right mouse button. But if you do on certain sections, it may actually make your job a little bit faster. We talked about flash drives, saving to external hard drives, which we did. Drag and drop, copy paste method of moving files over. We've talked about keeping our computer safe and turning our computer off. Okay. So, any questions? Do you think we covered a lot? Is there more things that you think we should add to this class? Let me know in a future class. Of course, this is technically part one to kind of the uh, to what we're working with. And tomorrow afternoon, we'll actually be doing part two, introduction to searching introduction to our browser introduction to uh, um, browser add-ons ad blockers stuff like that so that's kind of our class for today now let me go ahead and go about some of our other classes that we have coming up tomorrow and hope you'll join me for those <laughs> uh. So tomorrow at 11, we're going to be doing internet shopping and digital couponing here on our GCHRL videos YouTube channel. And tomorrow afternoon, we're going to do an internet browsers and basics. Like I said, kind of part two to this. But the internet shopping is a lot of fun too. Tomorrow, uh, Thursday morning, we're going to be doing introduction to Raspberry Pi projects and ideas. Yay! And I'm working on a new project we're going to be talking about some little LEDs that kind of go up and down uh, so I got a new little gadget here to kind of play around with and I'm gonna work on that some and also do our code and I'm actually working on a, a project class so maybe we can have just kind of hang out with Alex and if you have the components and maybe even get you started a little bit maybe you want to buy the components so that you can do some of the little projects I'll be covering in the future okay so this is kind of an introduction to Raspberry Pi uh, and project ideas to kind of get you started. What to buy, thinking about um, you know, what, what projects you can do and if get you kind of started and head in the right direction. And on Thursday, we're gonna be doing kind of part three to our introduction, uh, Google search and internet safety basics. Where we'll talk more about using our search engine, talk about internet scams, spotting fake news, and keeping yourself safe while you're online. Here's a list of our full schedule for the month, and then at the end, the last week in the month, we'll have the schedule for next month coming out, which is September. September. Can you believe it? September. 
Our, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside hold pickup is available. It's a wonderful service. Please thank the librarians for doing that service for us. It makes it very easy to get our books. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also like our videos and like this video too, please share with friends or family. And if you're searching for our YouTube channel, which is this channel, just search GCHRL videos on YouTube and it'll pull right up. So thank you for joining me this afternoon. Hope you learned a lot. Please share our videos with friends or family. I'm glad that you're staying at home and safe. Today is not a great day to go out and do exercise, but maybe tomorrow will. Stay safe, um, and I'll see you next time, okay? Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>